going? My name is John Cowan. I've been riding mountain bikes for Kona for the last three years. And this year we decided to go back to my hometown, San Diego, California, and give you guys some tips that'll make you better at jumping your bikes. Okay, before we get started, let's take a second to talk about the bike and bike setup. You know, the type of bike that you're riding isn't so important as long as you're riding a bike that's designed to do what you want it to do. A cross-country bike or a lightweight, low-end bike just isn't going to be strong enough for dirt jumping, and a snapped head tube is not going to feel good. Okay, a good example of a bike that's designed for dirt jumping is my bike right here. Bikes with this Kona-style box tubing, which are really reinforced well in the front, are a good way to start. You don't want that area to break and drop you on your head. As far as sizing goes, you want a bike which isn't too tall. The reason for that is you don't want to be crowded while you're dirt jumping. It's really important that you buy a bike which you feel comfortable on, a size that, that you like. But like I said, make sure that the bike isn't too, isn't too tall. Basically, when you sit on the bike, you want to feel free. You don't want to be restricted by your top tube at all. Tall bikes, that's kind of an old way of thinking, an old way of measuring bikes. Shorter is always better. <laughs> and not just because I'm short. <laughs> when you set up your handlebars, you need riser bars for dirt jumping. You need like at least a two inch rise handlebar, maybe with some spacers under it. You just want to be totally neutral. You don't want you to be leaning forward. You don't want to be all up ape hanger. You just want to be in a nice neutral position so that you can get forward or back on your bike super easily. Next thing is seat height. A lot of people think you just need to slam your seat uh, to dirt jump or bring it up so that you can hold it in your knees. Again, it's just neutral. If your seat's low enough that you can easily get behind it and then get back in front of it without it hitting on your clothes, the seat's low enough. It's in a perfect position. Okay, suspension. It's important, again, that you're riding a fork which is designed for what you want it to do. But you don't want to be out here on a cross-country fork because it's going to break. You also want to make sure that your fork is the right amount of travel for the bike that you're riding on. You don't want the fork to be too long because it'll rake out the head angle. You don't want it to be too short because it'll steepen your head angle. Okay, you want your fork to be set up a little stiffer than normal. If the fork's too soft, it's gonna absorb all your energy as you go through the rhythm and it's gonna slow you down. So just set it a little stiffer than it normally is, either by turning down the springs a little bit or adding a little bit of oil. Really, the only important thing about tires and dirt jumping is just pressure. I run mine at about 42 pounds, but I say the harder the better. A hard tire is fast, and fast is what's going to get you through the line. As far as everything else goes, you know, it's really not that important. As long as you're riding stuff which is designed to do what you want it to do. You know, you come out here on a cross-country crank and cross-country bottom bracket, you're just going to end up breaking them. But everything else, you know, hardtail, full suspension, single speed or 21 speed, v brakes or discs, that's just all hype and whatever you feel good about. So just don't buy into it and just do what you want to do. All right, that's enough of all the tech talk. Let's get on to something that's a little bit more fun. As far as pads go, the more the merrier, but I'd say that a good helmet and knee pads is the absolute bare minimum. Okay, we're out here in Encinitas, California with 10-year-old Bryson Martin. This guy's gonna show you all the basic basics on how to ride dirt jumps. The basic principle of dirt jumping is that you approach the jump neutral on the bike as you pump into the tranny with your weight slightly forward. The idea is to keep the front end of the bike at the same angle as the lip until your bike has completely left the lip. After leaving the lip, you then shift your body weight forward, which brings your front end down. This allows you to get good backside, which is hitting the landing at the same angle as the landing tranny. Need to build up. You should start on a small jump so that you feel comfortable and just build up experience. And you'd probably be better off to start on a tabletop style jump. I think that you should start rolling it a couple times and then start hitting the feel of it, jumping, jumping it a little bit, and then and then try and go for it. It's really difficult, no matter how good you are, to be able to judge the exact right speed. Every time I come to a new place, it's always the same story, trying to figure out how fast I need to go. I usually ride into a jump a couple of times but not jumping it, just feeling to see how smooth the tranny is, how steep it is, and feel out any kinks. And then I pedal into it at the speed I think I should go, visualizing if the speed I'm at is going to carry me to the other side. You should probably be prepared to case it, which is coming up short, rather than over jumping it the first couple of times. It's way easier to recover from casing it than over jumping it and landing in the flats. And if you case it somebody's spot, take the time to fix it. When you're sizing up a jump, you need to stay loose and react quick. If your front end is a little high, you can grab your rear brakes, which will bring your rear end up and your bike will level out. 
Now comes the notion of commitment. You know how to get enough speed because you've jumped and got good backside on a tabletop. Jumping to double is the same exact thing except for the mental factor that you're jumping over a big hole. It's just about having the confidence to commit because you can't roll it, you have to go for it. Jumping steeper jumps is a little more tricky because you need the confidence to go high and you have way more chance of getting fucked by the lift. The trick is just to stay loose and keep your front end up until your back tire has left the lift. Go for it. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all this beginning stuff is really just about confidence. You need to have confidence to know that the jump you're trying is either similar to something that you've done before or it's the next step for you. Just stay loose, commit, once you get these skills down, you'll be ready to try some rhythm. You have to let it all go, Neil. Fear, doubt, and disbelief. Free your mind. Okay, once you have the knack of jumping a single jump, it's time to take those same skills to rhythm. You know, confidence is the single biggest factor in riding a rhythm line. Fear and doubt, the two things that you can do without. And it's like they try to Because jumping rhythm is basically the same technique as jumping a single jump, except it's really important to get good backside and you need the confidence to commit and continue on. Walk the line, check out the jumps, see how steep the lips are and how far the gaps are apart. Size up the first jump just like we talked about for a single. Jump the first one and pull out before the second and really concentrate on getting good backside. Once you fit the landing well, the idea is to pump your speed down the landing, through the flat, and up the next jump. You do this by lowering your body close to your bike and slightly forward with the flow of the landing tranny. Stay low across the flats and then extend your body back up with the jump tranny. And then spring off the lip just like we learned about in the first section. Burning the hollow tip split, your head just like a cantaloupe, hunting them seas, just like some deer antelope. The antidotes here. Alright, you should try to stay low until you have all the jumps wired. Remember to commit and stay loose. Once you have the first and the second down, just repeat steps one and two for the rest of the line. Hey, if you're riding a full suspension and you're having a hard time, it's probably because you're overloading your suspension. Riding smoother and carrying more speed will definitely help. Alright, we're going to get into riding downhill rhythm, where the gaps are getting progressively bigger. That's a little bit more technical, but it's a lot of fun. And a few select personnel who elect me Cause they know I handle your reject verse as well In rhymes I've seen the reject This is like, like a commitment line You have no chance to gain speed So basically what you need to do is you need to land on the, on the backside Get good backside Let off your brakes Just know that you're going to be able to make it to the other side And you just have to go for it If you took all that time you wasted in asking Aladdin And started asking a lot for forgiveness And basking Aladdin the light That we place it down in fear with knowledge and insight when I rode this, I went really slow, as not to overshoot, just kind of popped it up, got over the top of the landing, and dropped in. Once I dropped in, just made sure my, my tires landed really smooth on the lift, let off the brakes, and I let it roll. The difference between this jump and the next jump is about twice the height and about twice the distance. And I built that speed with no flat bottom and in maybe only three bike lanes. And the reason I was able to do that is because it's going downhill and because I pumped off the landing. Frequently exhibited is my uninhibited ability for divinity. Effortlessly rolling off the tongue. Like okay, we're gonna combine some basic tricks like X ups, tabletops, and motor whips in with advanced rhythm. You can actually use those tricks to help you finesse through tough rhythm lines. I fly first class with my first glass. Universe fast, I'm making the worst class of MC this first fast. Let's check ourselves. In tough rhythm lines that aren't straight and over hips and transfers, it's important to stay loose and lead with your body. Be in control and remember that you are riding your bike. Your bike is not taking you for the ride. On a hip jump or any jump that isn't straight, you want to ride into it centered and loose. As you ride up the lip, your body should lean slightly in the direction that you want to go. Your weight should be shifted slightly forward and your body should be leading through the jump.
You can use a moto whip to help you on a hip, and it can also help you to get into steep landing. Ride into a whip just like a hip jump. As you ride up the lip, start to lean into it. And just as you leave the lip, shift your body weight forward. Stay close to the bars, twist your body, and allow your back tire to float out to the side. Keep your upper body heading forward, and as you hit your peak, shift your body weight back over the top of your bike. Turn your bars in the opposite direction of the whip, and let your bike float back straight, and then land. Tables also help on hips, and are super fun when you want to bust out. Just after you leave the lip, lift your legs and tweak them to the side. Lift your upper hand and drag it horizontally across your chest so that it is over your lower hand. Roll your upper hand over your grip so that you don't get all bound up. Your bike should be flat at the same time as you hit your peak. I like to use X-Ups to help me stay loose and help me flow through rhythm. When you're at your peak, shift your upper body forward so that your shoulders are over your bars. Keep your knees back near your seat so they're out of the way. Rotate your bars around either way that feels comfortable. And rotate your bars around and back in one fluid motion. Okay, those aren't even really tricks, but just adding those to your riding is going to give it soul. Being able to pump through lines, have style, tweak out things, do moto whips, it's just going to make everything look a lot better. difficult than you might think. All you really need to pull one is, is a straight controlled air and the nuts to let go of your handlebars. I wish I could ride to sound an ocean and start, but for now I You need to set your seat height so that you can easily pinch it with your knees. It could be right at your knees or just below. It doesn't really matter, just wherever it feels right. Okay, the idea of holding your seat with your knees is to keep your front end from dropping, but it's a bit of a false sense of security because once you get the trick down, you should be able to do it without really pinching your seat. Alright, find a jump that you feel really confident on. Go over it a few times straight and in control. Pinch your seat with your knees and loosen your grip in the air. Loosen it more and more each time until finally you've let go of the handlebars. When you're right there, you've done a no-hander. All you need to do is move your arms to the side. Move your arms out to the side as opposed to straight up. And then just keep extending them more and more until they're behind your back. Then work on standing straight up. In a good styling no-hander, your body will be straight up and down and your arms will be extended behind your back. A no-hander lander is a total head trip, but don't let it trip you out. If you can do a no-hander, then you can land with no hand. Find a jump that has a really nice landing and that you feel confident on. Do a bunch of no-handers and make sure that you're hitting the landing perfect every time. Alright, now is when you're really going to need to feel confident. As you leave the lip, make sure that you're really straight and in control. When you're at your peak, spot your landing. Make sure that you're lined up and that you're not going to come up short or over jump. As you let go, push very slightly forward on your handlebars so that your bike nose dives in and comes in at the exact same pitch as the landing tranny. Stand up really straight on your bike and get your arms up for balance. It's very important to stand up really straight and be centered on the bike. Doing a no-hander lander on a full suspension is so easy that it's pretty much cheating. Keep your eyes forward and on the landing at all times. Okay, you really need to commit to this trick because it takes way more commitment than it does technical skills. If you do a no-hander and an X-up, then a bar spin should be no problem for you. So before you try, you need to make sure that your bike is set up for one. For a bar spin, you don't have to have a gyro, but you do have to have your front brake line routed through your steer tube or no front brake at all. I have one of each. Also, in case you haven't noticed, you can't do a bar spin with a double crown fork. Start on the ground. Sit on your seat and prop your front tire up by resting your pedal up against your knee or shin pad. 
sit there and spin the bars back and forth either way you want until you know you got it. Again, approach the jump just like you would a no-hander. Get straight and stable on the bike. To tell heights we taking you in a fear we breaking you making you aware of that vibration the shit when you're at your peak spot your landing if you're straight and in control spin the bars just like you did on the ground careful not to throw your bars too far because if you do your bike will get all squirrely in the air the first couple of times you may want your inside hand to follow your bars around just to make sure they make it Poetically, steadily, to melodies, poetically, rock steadily, to yeah, melodies. basically it. There's only so many ways you can take your hands off your handlebars. No footer is definitely not the coolest trick in the world, but once you get those skills down, it'll open the door to all kinds of killer tricks like no foot cans, supermans, Indian airs, and even the tail up is based off a of no footer. The way that I learned how to do no footer, I just rode my bike down to 7-Eleven. Um, every little bump and driveway the whole way, I just did that. Threw my feet off the pedals. By the time I got there, I had a slurpee and I knew how to do a no footer. You're just going to ride along, you're going to look down at your pedals, you're going to try to jump up, take your feet off and put them back on the pedals. Just like this. Okay, the idea of doing that, you're just going to teach you how to look down at your pedals and stay centered on your bike. Progress that up, you're just trying to do it in a little bit of a wheelie. That'll give you an idea of how to keep the front end up and keep your feet off and keep your eyes at the pedals all at the same time. Okay, now that you feel comfortable taking your feet off on the ground, take it to a jump. Go over the jump and keep your upper body in the same position that you would for a straight jump. Just after your rear tire leaves the lip, take your feet off the pedals, then put them back on. Don't let the movement of your lower body affect your upper body. Keep your eyes looking down, but don't stare. You should have your pedals and the landing in soft focus. And that's all there is to it. All right, now let's tweak out that no footer a little bit and make it into a no foot can can. The technique of a no foot can can is basically a no footer with a twist. Hit the jump just like you would a no-footer, except you need to keep your front end slightly higher, because this trick likes to send you into a nosedive. Make sure that when you take your feet off, you lift them straight up. When your feet are high enough to clear the top tube, twist your hips so that both legs are on one side of the bike. Then, extend your legs. Stay loose and try to keep your upper body balanced and moving forward. Okay, boys and girls, let's extend that no-footer into a Superman. You can build up to Superman by getting comfortable with doing no-footers and then extending your arms out into sort of a no-footer Superman. And then just push it further and further until you're there. A seat grab actually makes the trick a little easier because it helps you to control your bike. Okay, your feet should be coming off the pedals and your hand moving towards the seat right when your back tire leaves the lift. Your butt should rise up to its maximum height with your knees bent before you extend your legs. Grab the seat and push forward at the exact same time as your feet snap back into full extension. This should be done simultaneously and in one smooth motion. Pull your bike back towards you with your arms and move your hand back to the handlebars. Swing your feet underneath and back onto the pedals. Remember to stay loose and commit. Okay, now not a whole lot harder, but a whole lot burlier, the Indian Air. You're gonna ride into an Indian Air seat grab just like you'd ride into a Superman seat grab. 
right up until your hand is on the seat and you're ready to kick back with your feet. Then making sure that your legs are going to clear your rear tire, twist your hips and extend your legs in opposite directions. Then twist your hips back and put your feet back on the pedal. Again, at the same time and in one fluid motion. Alright now, you can use those skills to do all kinds of notebook variations. There's no limit to how extended and tweaked out you can get. Alright, I'm going to show you guys how to do a 360. 360 is the most technical trick out there. It's the only trick that your inertia is fighting against you the whole time. You're going to lose sight of the landing for like 75% of your rotation and it takes total commitment. This trick is no joke. Okay, visualize rolling up the lip and the rotation. You'll need to carry more speed than you would for a straight jump as the rotation and the rotating mass of your tires will suck up all your energy. It's a good idea and I have seen guys trying to learn them out of bowls or jumps to flat. It's a good way to learn the rotation but it's not going to teach you how to come in nose first. the jump centered and ready to spin. Right at the lip, twist your handlebars in the direction that you want to rotate. Drop your inside elbow and turn your head looking over your now dropped shoulder behind you. It is important to do this at exactly the right time. Too soon and your back tire will drag up the lip and you will not have enough rotation. Too late and there will be nothing to push off and you still won't have enough rotation. Stay tight on your bike and keep your body slightly ahead of your bike as it leads through the rotation. If your bike gets ahead of your body, you're going to land on your side. As you spot your landing, push your handlebars forward and come in at the same pitch as your landing tranny. You need to do a slight twist and spring that starts at your feet and resonates all the way up through your body. Okay, once you've stomped that one, you're going to be stoked like you have never been stoked before. As far as variations go, just use your imagination. Keep combining these tricks and other ones, because freeriding has no limits. Remember to stay loose, commit, and don't get frustrated. Just keep trying and you guys will get there. Okay, we're at the Encinitas YMCA. We'll be with the... Uh... That, that was messed up. Alright, 